This clinical image based question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and I won't want you to see the entire explanation of this particular question because I'm going to take you through a lot of important histological slides uh, which are very frequently asked in the examination. So let's look at this question. The question says that a 63 year old male presented with complaint of fatigue and weakness and this happened over past one month. So you ordered a peripheral smear and this is the picture you took here. So the question asks which of the following is the most likely genetic change associated with this patient and your options are translocation 922, translocation 1517, translocation 1114 and translocation 1118. So these are your options. So let's look at what each of these genetic changes imply and in what specific condition can we see them. So when we talk about translocation T922, we are talking about Philadelphia chromosome. And can you name the condition where it is seen? It is primarily seen in your CML and sometimes in ALN, but primarily it will be seen in your CML cases. How about translocation of 1517? So again, it is seen in AML, can be seen from M1 to M3, but primarily in your M3. So it is primarily seen in your acute promyelocytic leukemia. Okay. What about 1114? So 1114 is seen in one of the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, specifically your mantle cell lymphoma how about 1118 so 1118 again it's seen in one of the non-hodgkin's lymphoma and it is primarily seen in your follicular lymphoma okay and what is the specific uh, you know image that is showing you so you can see these are basically your or rocks okay and this is primarily seen in your AML T1517 will be the correct answer. So let me take you through each of these images and tell more about it. So here in this image, so it's a magnified version of this particular cell, all these cell. So it's a magnified version. And what you see is basically this cytoplasmic inclusions. Okay. And these cytoplasmic inclusions are basically called as or rods. Okay. What are, where they are seen in? We have seen, they are seen in AML. AML, we know there are several subtypes. So it is generally seen in M1 to M3, but primarily in your M3, which is in acute pro-myelocytic leukemia. Okay. Then another important thing, and uh, another important thing is what they are made up of. So they have basically enzymes, okay? crystallized enzymes and what are these enzymes so they can be myeloperoxidases or other lysosomal enzymes and this is very very important because the you know mass uh, destruction of these cells is what leads to a very important complication in these uh, AML patient that is DIC okay DIC because of the clotting factor, uh, you know, uh, being uh, activated because of these enzymes. So DIC is very, very common of these subtype because of these or rod cells only. And when you stain them, how do you find? So you can have crystallized granules, okay, which stain as, uh, you know, elongated red or pink crystals. So this is all about our red cells and we have learned a lot about AML in the specific lecture but this is a very very important clinical image. Let's look at this image. I have told you that in this particular uh, you know video I'll take you through a lot of important images. So what is this? Can anyone tell me what is this? So this basically is your classical Reed Sternberg cell also called as rs cell so we know it looks like an owl eye okay it looks an owl eye and where does where is it seen so it is basically seen in your hodgkin's lymphoma we know that rs cells 
uh, you know are of various subtypes like pleomorphic you can have uh, lacunar you can have popcorn mummy there are various different types of rsl but primarily if you identify this image you will be able to answer most of the question another very important you know differential diagnosis of rsls so it is also seen in some solid cancers okay it is also seen in infectious mononucleases okay or even in immunoblastic lymphoma okay so these are the differential diagnosis of rsls rsl very very important will you be able to identify it let's look at the next image so what do you see here so these are called as buttock cells okay and you can see these buttock cells in your follicular lymphoma okay which is a kind of non hodgkin lymphoma okay let's look at this image so what can you see in this image this typically appearance you know it's like completely filled so this is called as starry sky appearance very easy to identify and primarily diagnostic of Parkits lymphoma. Okay. They are very, very aggressive tumors, these Burkitt lymphomas. Further, they are divided into endemic, sporadic, and HIV related. So, we know that endemic is one with the jaw uh, swelling and all. So, we will not go into the details, but this image you have to identify starry sky appearance. Let's look at the next image. Very easy to identify. So we have got a something hairy projections and this is what we see in your hairy cell leukemia. So it's again a B cell tumor. Okay. And this image, remember, it is seen in your phase contrast microscopy. Okay. So this is hairy cell leukemia. Let's look at the next image. So what can you see? this image so this is basically called as what well, the image you will identify is at horse shaped nucleus and this is seen in your anaplastic large cell lymphomas anaplastic large cell lymphomas now a very very important point which have been asked on anaplastic large cell lymphoma is they express cd30 and we have a lot of good anti CD30 molecules. Okay, so they have very good prognosis because these CD4, you know, uh, expression of CD30 can be, you know, uh, specifically targeted by this anti CD30 uh, molecules. So now they have very good prognosis. And what you can identify is this horseshoe shaped nucleus. What is this? So here, What is this? So this we call it as cerebriform nucleus, which means like the convolutions of the brain. Okay, this is seen in your cutaneous T cell lymphomas. Okay, again it's a CD4 tumor. Okay, so cerebriform nucleus seen in your cutaneous T cell lymphoma. This again image has been asked multiple times. So this is what you call as a tennis racket cells. And this is seen in your Langer cell histiocytosis. Okay. A very important question which has been asked is the kind of mutation which we see in this. So we see BRAF mutation. This has been asked quite a few times in past two, three years. But very easy to identify that is tennis racket cells or langer cell histiocytosis now what about this what about this looks like a flower looks like a flower okay so we call it as flower cell and it is seen in your adult t cell leukemia 
easy to identify in the examination okay and now what about this so two images i have shown so first is this very very diagnostic so you have this you know cells which smudge out fragile cells so we what we call this as smudge cells or basket cells or even parachute cells parachute cells and all of these is seen in your chronic lymphocytic leukemia chronic lymphocytic leukemia another very important thing about the same image is we can see that all the cells almost look like each other so that is why these cells are called this is called as a convent girl appearance why convent girl because in convent what happens all the girls will be wearing exactly same dress so they look exactly same so that is why this is called as a convent girl appearance we are going to see another appearance and this is a image of a lymph node biopsy and you can see there is a diffuse effacement of the lymph architecture so both these images basically relate to your CLL patient okay and the last image which I am going to see you show you is this so what does this see it looks like the cytoplasm a lot of things have been you know uh, uh, what you call accumulated and this is what we called as pseudo Goucher cells we know in Goucher cells what will happen a lot of uh, you know uh, Goucher these cerebro glucocerebrocytes get accumulated that is Goucher cells so here also there is an accumulation which looks like a pseudo Goucher cells and when is this condition seen this is seen in CML pseudo Goucher cell appearance now in this case we see that all the cells are in different stages of maturation and this is what we called as is college girl appearance let me show you uh, you know another image so that you are going and this college girl appearance is seen in per peripheral smear because different stages of maturation uh, because there is no maturational arrest also named by another name that is flower garden appearance okay so these were very very important images let me quickly revise it again for you so that it's like you know uh, very very clear for you uh, just let me revise all the slides okay so this is odd cells very very easy to identify okay this is your rs cell again easy to identify this is your buttock cell again easy to identify uh, this is your starry sky appearance easy to identify this is your hairy cell leukemia remember it's not in the staining it is the phase contrast microscopy where you see these hairy cells this is your horseshoe shoe nucleus that is seen in anaplastic large cell lymphoma this is your cerebriferum nucleus this is your uh, bucket uh, racket appearance this is your flower uh, you know shaped uh, flower cells adult cell leukemia this is your uh, CLL where you see smudge cells and uh, you know convent curl appearance then again you can have diffuse effacement of lymph node and finally this is the last image where you see pseudo gotcha cells and college curl appearance all these images are super super important i would really want you to save this video because if you know almost all hematolo hematological cancers you know uh, key images i have captured in this particular video